Hi guys, I'm Christian and one of the trainers here at Loot Community. I wanted to take a few minutes to show you around a new template that's available to download from the Loot Community website called the Loot Community Advanced Template. This is the template that I run all of my loops in. Uh, it's in session view and it gives a lot of automation and a lot of flexibility for arranging on the fly, for controlling things like chord charts, for controlling pro presenter, for turning on and off the metronome, for different things. And I want to give you a, talk, uh, a quick tour through how to set it up and then also some of the things that it can do for you. The template's made in Live 8, so it'll work for both Live 8 and Live 9 users. Um, and I just wanted to talk you through basically what it looks like. So we've got a number of columns here, and then we've got our master column down this side. And the way that I run this is that the top block is my ambient pads, and then my songs start from down here. So if I'm doing a single shot song, I literally will put in the name here, the name of the song, the BPM, and the time signature. If I'm doing a song that's in multiple pieces, then I lay it out as follows. So I put the, the song name, and then the section of the song, so click, intro, verse 1, chorus, with the BPM, and also the time signature. And then this little M for me just donates that it's a multi-track rather than a loop. And then over here is where I load each part of the tracks into. So the first column is where my ambient pads are. And I leave this column always for ambient pads so that I can map this volume controller uh, to one of my foot pedals so I can control the, the volume swells on the loops. The second column you'll see is can be expanded. And this is where I put my single waveforms, which may be a loop from start to finish. Typically, if I bought the loop from Loop Community, it'll go in there. And the reason I've got two columns is so I can stagger them, so I can remove stop buttons to create a better flow. Uh, and you can find out more about that by reading through the blocks or by engaging some of the trainers. The next section is what I call multi-tracks. And these, if you open up, I've created a space for putting each one of the sections from a multi-track. So I can drag in the beats, pads, piano, bass, lead, guitar, etc. You can rename these, call them whatever you like. But the reason I do these in multiple tracks is I can then turn off the track that I don't need for that Sunday. So if I have a bass player in, I can literally just turn off the bass section or turn off the lead guitar, or whatever it might be. And also I can route the audio to different places. So I could actually give the sound guy all of the pads and piano sounds on one output so he can mix them into the desk. The next column is where I put the Q tracks and you'll see that I've got two columns folded in here. One is the Q track column so that's where I put the the vocal cue that will come with the loop or the multi-track from Loop Community that talks you through the entire arrangement. But then what I've also got here is I've got the um, single shot loop cues that I've taken from the Loop Community vocal cue pack which again is a free download and I've put them in here on uh, with zero quantization. And the reason for doing that is if I'm navigating a song on the fly and I decide I want to go and jump from, let's say, verse to chorus, the minute that I click my button for chorus, it'll say chorus in our ear and then the rest of the loop will follow on the next one. So, for example, if I'm in verse here, verse. you hear the metronome going. If I press chorus, you'll hear chorus first and then the loop will follow on the one. Here we go. Chorus and then the loop follows on the one. So it's just a really nice way of being able to run vocal director cues um, on the fly as you're still arranging keep the band tight. The next column has uh, a column called click. Now, the first one is for alternate click, so there are some tracks that I've downloaded, like Oceans from Hillsongs United, where the metronome changes, so I might, uh, sorry, the, the, um, the timing, the tempo changes, so I might use the metronome that came with the track rather than using Ableton, so I drop that in there. And then these two are automated uh, MIDI notes that turn on and off the metronome. So if I don't want the metronome playing, for example I'm playing, playing a generic pad in the key of G, you'll notice that this here, let me just turn that up so you can hear it, this here turned off the metronome. And if I put the metronome on by clicking in one of our tracks down here, verse. there we go, you'll notice that the metronome was turned on by clicking one of these. And what happens is this is just simply sending a MIDI note out on a CC code that's going out of the MacBook on an IAC driver and coming in to control the metronome. And simply if I'm using a song that I don't want the metronome for, or I'm using a different metronome, I'll drag in one of these brown ones, and if I do, I'll drag in one of the yellow ones. And I'll show you how to set that up in just a moment. The next column is called MIDI triggers, and I've got four main MIDI triggers in here. One is video, so we tend to run a lot of lyric videos and the lyric videos can be sent to ProPresenter so that they're programmed to a hotkey so that the lyric video will start 
exactly as the loop starts. And to do that, I just literally put a MIDI note in one of these columns and map it to Pro Presenter. There's a few videos available on that, um, but this is the column that I do that in. The next one is chord charts. So I have a, a comfort monitor that sits on the front of my stage, which is running um, words in Apple's preview. And this MIDI note gets sent out of Ableton. It's picked up by a MIDI translator, which converts that to a MIDI note, which turns the page for me. The next column is on song. Um, and this sends a MIDI note out on a different network, which the iPads on stage pick up, and it turns the page to the right song on on song. And then finally, pro presenter. And again, very similar to the videos, but in this template, what I've included is all of the commands that you would need to control all of the functionality of ProPresenter, from launching images, to doing black screens, to launching audio, to launching props, to doing countdowns, etc. So that's what can, what's, what's in the template. Let me just show you quickly how to set some of that up. So the first thing that you will need to do is to make sure that you've activated the IAC driver, which allows you to route the metronome. So to do that, just go into your audio MIDI settings on a MacBook. You can do this different ways on the PC. This is how you do it on the MacBook. And if you go into your audio MIDI setup, which is inside your um, Applications Utilities folder, you'll find that you've got um, MIDI window here and the IAC driver. Double click on the IAC driver and you need to activate one, two, at least one and two ports. I use three ports for this and make sure that the device is online. Then come back into Ableton and then go to Live Preferences, go to MIDI and make sure that the IAC driver bus one is turned on for output and on for input. Whilst you're here, also turn on bus two and bus three. Then, if you come down to the bottom of this column here, which is a click on and off, and select, it should be highlighted red if it's not working, and when it is working, it'll be sort of highlighted black, so click that, make sure that's black, then your metronome will now work. So again, when you trigger off a pad, the metronome turns off. When you turn on a loop, wait for that to trigger, the metronome turns off. Brilliant, so that's that one done. Um, again, in MIDI triggers, because we've just turned on the IAC driver here for the chord charts, that's ready to go. And then you see that we're running two networks here, so we just need to go and make sure that the network is on as well. So we go back to the same window, which is the audio MIDI setup. And sometimes it launches audio device. If it does, click window and click show MIDI window. There we go. Click into network, and this is where you create a network. So you click the plus arrow, you create a network here. This directory will show you any other um, computers which are available on your same Wi-Fi network. Click connect and the MacBook will then create a MIDI network over Wi-Fi between these two computers. So then you can send MIDI notes from this computer to the computer that's running ProPresenter um, at the back of the room or wherever else it might be in your worship space. So that's then ready to go as far as the template is concerned and then you just finally need to make one change to ProPresenter to make sure it's ready to take these notes in. So let me just open up my copy of ProPresenter which is here, let me just get rid of the update screen. Okay, um, you can either do this as a demo or run it, but inside preferences of ProPresenter, if you go to communications, you will see here that this is where we add our communications. Let's imagine we didn't have one, there's no devices. First thing you need to do is click the MIDI setup, okay, and if you put a zero in this top box and then click autofill and then click OK, what it will basically do is it will assign those MIDI notes to every command and this will, be, this will correlate perfectly to the MIDI notes that I've already put in the template for you. So we click OK and then we add a device. So I'm going to add a MIDI device and it's asked me what I want to add. So I want to add a MIDI device on KP's MacBook which is the network. Click Save, click Connect and I'm also going to add one on my IAC driver, bus 3 just so that if I'm uh, running ProPresent off the same MacBook as the um, Ableton off the same MacBook, I can run it that way as well. Click Save and click Connect. That's now connected. ProPresenter is ready to receive those incoming MIDI notes, turn the pages, jump to the right place, etc. So you can come back out of ProPresenter and go back to your Ableton template. So we're now ready to go. Um, like I said, if you're running network, make sure these are on network. However, if you are running them on the same computer, you can use that IAC driver bus 3 and that will do exactly the job. So let's say we're setting up a song. All you would simply do is dra drag and drop the song into where you want it. 
So if you've downloaded a track and you want to put the loop into loop, you would open up your finder, you would navigate to where the song is. So um, see what I've got here quickly to use. Oh, they're not there because I've saved them as volume nine. But you would literally go to here, grab the song that you want, and drag them into the loop section. And you would grab the cues and drag the cues into the cue track. And then if you do want to make use of the Pro Presenter, you can go down and you can drag in the relevant next playlist. Or you can use them to build up a whole MIDI note MIDI channel. We can provide some more training on that, but just wanted to show you that it's here in the template. So I hope that helps. I hope you see that the template is a great way of running your loops. My template is now full of 500 or so loops and the just template goes on forever. Each one of them is named down this side so it's very easy to find. And then on a Sunday I simply click MIDI and I click on the song that I want to and I map it to the relevant button on my foot controller and my template's ready to go. Again, once my audio device is connected, I can then route the Q tracks, um, the Q and the click tracks to 1 and 3 and the master to front of house which will be 1 and 2 and then I change the cues and the clicks here as well to make sure that they're also rooting into our in-ears and not front of house. So I hope that helps. Any questions, please get in touch. Um, and hopefully this video was helpful just explaining how the new template works. Take care and God bless.